Welcome back everyone, I'm Pai Shredovich, and today we're going to be discussing how to make minecart loaders in Minecraft. So the first one here is the simplest, it's very similar to the unloader I have over there. And basically the way it works here, I've just put a powered rail at the end here for it to bounce off of. You'd probably do something else with this minecart and put an unloader at the end. But it, there's a comparator on this hopper, and if there are items in the comparator, it sig turns this wire on and as a result turns this off. So if I put even one item in there, this becomes unpowered, and the hopper, minecart hopper is able to suck it up. And then once this is empty again, this becomes powered again, which launches off the minecart. So if I put in, say, a stack of something, the minecart's going to stop here. You can see it unloads very quickly, which is why I like to use minecart hoppers over chest minecarts, even though chest minecarts have 27 stacks they can hold instead of five. But minecart hoppers, when fed from a hopper, uh, feed at a ridiculously fast speed here, as you can see, which is pretty useful. They still unload at a relatively normal speed, but they load at a very fast speed. Now this has a issue where it's possible for the minecart to fill up while there's still items in here. So let's say I get a couple stacks of this, I grab some farm of dirt, I grab some farmland, and this is going to slowly fill this guy up. And I think, if especially if I put some bow meal in, it's, it's going to run out. It's not going to be able to put this dirt in. And so now the minecart's stuck here because there's still items in here that it's that is locking the system, but it can't actually flow to this minecart hopper due to the fact that not enough space. If I take this out though, it will free itself because there's no items left in here. But even if I put a single item in here, it will lock itself uh, for all of eternity. Um, so over here is basically my solution to the jamming problem, because if you don't have many items, this works just fine. It's very simple to build here, as you can see. You just need to get a comparator uh, putting a single signal, which that a signal strength of one can change this torch, and as a result, change this. Over here, though, I'm going to explain how this works. This has jamming protection. So the way you have to do this is you have to get the minecart onto both a power rail and a detector rail. Uh, let's grab a power rail real quick here. Uh, don't need the piston right now. So if we got a power rail, um, we need to have it on a power rail so that when it powers, it can send the minecart off, but it also needs to be on a detector rail so we can detect how many items are in the minecart. Interesting. All right, we need a comparator. So we'll need a comparator on this, this rail here. So the way we do that is we have this angled system as you see over here. Um, but if I simply build it up like this, I get a block so it stops, and I send these over here and I just get a minecart on it. Let's do that real quick and let's grab a lever to power this. So let's say I just do this here. So you can see it's not on this block. And actually I did this slightly wrong. We'd want to place we want to place the powered rail at an angle and have a detector here. And we'll place this block here. But if I, I if I run this up here Oh, well, so this is powering itself, which is a problem. Um, basically, if I put a block above it, this is not detect detected by the detecting ra rail. So we need to get a way to get this to be on both simultaneously. There's a few ways to do that. Um, you need to use slightly smaller blocks, like a fence or a wall. I think iron bars work as well. So if you put this here, and it's unpowered, so it's a braking system, but if we power it for a moment there, it will slide down and be able to rest on both. Whereas if we put a, a regular block there, and we, we put this here, and we power it, it can't actually go down enough to detect both. So we need to use a fence, or a wall, or an iron bar, or something like that, over this block. And the key thing is, is if I power this, the minecart can pass through it, but it can't come back. So as you can see, it's now on the detector rail, um, but it can't, it can't come back. Um, which is key. This does still work with the block. It can't come back from that. Um, but it won't end up on the power rail, or on the detector rail. As you can see here, it is turned off. So that's the key, is to get a wall. And what we're going to want to do, let me get up here. I think it's at this height. We need a sticky piston. Like so. And let me extend this real quick. 
Perfect. So the sticky piston can bring the wall down, which locks the system, because right now, if I grab one of these, that's the wrong thing, it'll just go forever because the wall is not in the right place. But if the wall gets extended down for whatever reason, then it's going to get stuck here, which is exactly what we needed to do. Um, additionally, so over here, as you could see, when we put this hopper here, it fills the system up very quickly and it unloads at extremely high speed. However, if we put a hopper, say, um, right here, it will fill up the minecart. In fact, let's let's demonstrate that real quick. But it's going to be slow. Um, it's like a chest uh, minecart getting filled. Um, so the key thing you need to do here is you need to actually place the minecart, hop, the hopper, and above the trail, and it'll actually be inside of the minecart slightly, and then it will fill up at a fast speed. Now what we've done here is we've placed a comparator off of the detector rail, and that figures out how many items are in this hopper. As you can see, um, this minecart hopper is empty, and so we're not getting a signal out of this even though this is turning on. And what happens is, let's say I put an item in here. It's going to flash real quick, but now this is a signal strength of 1 because there is an item in the minecart hopper. Um, so there's a few ways you could do this. What I have done here is I've said once this reaches a signal strength of 3, which is I think 42 items, 43, 47, somewhere in there, it'll be able to power this torch. Um, and once you reach the torch, the signal strength doesn't matter anymore. It comes up here, it talks to this comparator, and it will basically override this comparator. So what happens is if we have items in here, uh, it's very similar to this design, except I go up. It goes up and it powers this piston. So let's let's break this real quick. So if I put some items in here, even one, this piston um, re extends because this comparator sees that there's an item in here and it powers all of this. However, um, well, if I put this here, it's going to unflow. But what happens is, it's if I put a ton of items, let's just put a bunch of villager spawn eggs here. Actually, let me get this into the right spot here. Um, this is going to slowly build up, and once it reaches a high enough level, it this overrides the signal and locks the comparator, which does not allow the system to come through. Now we're getting this jiggling here because there's no way to unload the items, but if I unload them manually like this, it's going to stay back here until it reaches critical mass, and then it takes off. Now of course you can always change the length of this to change how many items you need. Uh, you could make this so it has to be completely full. I don't personally like doing that because uh, maybe you have like six different items in here. And so all, all your items in here are of one type, but they can't go into the hopper because even though the hopper is not full, it doesn't have room for that type of block. So I like keeping it at a small signal length. And yeah, it'll bounce around a bunch and it won't get full, but you also don't run the risk of jamming. Um, you could also directly feed this comparison result into the comparator up here. And that way you would actually, instead of saying, okay, we need a, a signal strength of three to override this. It'd be, we need a signal strength of like 15 or whatever the signal strength this is feeds directly into here. Instead of in this case, we get like a signal strength of, I think 15 directly feeding into that. You can also design this in a number of different ways. You can see this is the exact same thing over here. I just laid it out differently. Um, so it works in my items uh, st uh, storage over there, that big building. Uh, there's lots of ways you can do it. But uh, it's the same general thing. Instead, the comparator now runs through here, goes up this line, comes back. There's the comparator. Um, this is the same thing. It takes a single signal strength over here and turns this on. But eventually, the signal is going to come through, and it uh, allow uh, stops the comparator from sending a signal through, which is exactly what we want. Um, so yeah, this basically is a system that doesn't allow the minecart loader to jam up like this one can. And if you have an unloader on the other side, you don't need to really worry about putting too many items into the system because your minecart is going to leave here at, when it reaches a certain level of fullness anyways and head off to wherever you want the items to go. So that's basically the way it works. Uh, let me know if you have any other suggestions on tutorials you want to see. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.